morning. <clears throat> so today we celebrate this uh, feast we call the Baptism of the Lord. And as we celebrate this feast of baptism, it's a good time for us to step back and look at our own baptisms. Like, what does your baptism mean? Like, what is baptism all about? To so just think about that for a minute as we, as we just reflect a little. And as we're entering the Mass, if you notice all the prayers of the Mass are about just a relationship with our Father. You know, we start in the beginning with the Father, Son, and Spirit. You know, as we go, we ask God to forgive us, right? Then we're saying glory to God in the highest. And then we're going to hear the scriptures as we just did, right? And so it's all about drawing us into this relationship. So the heart of baptism is relationship. And it's God calling us to celebrate and enter into a relationship with Him. And most of us were baptized as children, right? So as we, as we hear the scriptures, you know, we grow in our faith. We start walking out our relationship with the Lord. And our, relations, <clears throat> our relationship with the Lord, you know, we come to church to kind of refocus in on that relationship, right? And then as we go through our week, it's good to have something to think about, to reflect on, to focus us in. Because of all the things that happen all week long, right? All the distractions, all the many things that happen in our daily lives. We need regularly refocusing on that relationship. Just like in a marriage or in a family or in a friendship. You need to focus on that relationship if it's going to last. So it's not going to last if there's no focusing on it and working toward it, right? So baptism is our entering into this relationship. And what do we hear in our gospel? Listen. We hear the three persons of the Trinity named right there in our, in our gospel. We have Jesus himself, obviously. But then we says here, Jesus also had been baptized and was praying. Heaven was opened. So heaven was opened. So baptism's about, again, you and I entering into a relationship with the Father. Heaven was opened through Christ for you and I. Okay, so heaven is open and what happens? The Holy Spirit descends upon him. So we have Jesus, the Son, we have the Holy Spirit. And who speaks? God the Father speaks. And what does God the Father say to us? He says, you are my beloved Son with whom I'm well pleased. That's what Jesus hears. And so baptism is about relationship, it's about prayer then, right? When you're in relationship with God, that's called prayer. That's what prayer is, a relationship with God. We're doing it right now. As we celebrate Mass, we're entering into our relationship with God. We're spending time with God, our Father, through the Son, by the power of the Spirit. If you listen to all the prayers I'm about to pray in a few moments um, in the Mass here, the, the liturgy of the Eucharist, which we're about to begin, Listen to the Eucharistic prayer. I'm going to pray Eucharistic prayer number three. There's, there's four Eucharistic prayers. There's some other um, votive mass Eucharistic prayers. But we're going to do Eucharistic prayer number three today. Listen to the Eucharistic prayer. It's always directed to the Father. Because we are in Christ praying to the Father through the Spirit. Without the Spirit, none of us can say Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. And I mean when I say that, I mean saying it from the heart, not just... Jesus is Lord. Anybody could say it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying to say it with conviction in your heart, only the Holy Spirit can convict your hearts and my heart that Jesus is the Lord. And so baptism is again about this relationship with the Father through the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's not something that we just think about. We walk it out. We live it out. We step into it daily. We walk out our baptism primarily through our vocation. If you're a single, consecrated person to the Lord, you consecrate your life to the Lord, you walk it out as a single person. If you're married, you walk it out in your marriage. If you're a priest or a deacon, you walk it out as a priest or deacon. If you're a religious brother or sister, like uh, a monk at Saint Michael, Mount St. Michael, um, if you're a religious sister, uh, like the Poor Claire sisters, whatever it be, if you're a sister or a brother, you're walking out your baptism. 
It's the power of God in us to help us live out what we're called to live. And what are we called to live? Nothing other than Jesus. Jesus is the goal. So baptism has brought you and I into the body of Christ. What that means is, this is what you and I will see when we die. Every headache you've ever suffered will not be just you. You'll see Jesus suffering that headache with you, in you, and through you. Right now we walk by faith, not by sight. Those of you that might have suffered or suffer from a disease such as cancer or uh, leukemia or uh, arthritis or whatever the illness you suffer, you'll see at the moment of your death that it was Christ in you and through you suffering that with you. Our baptism is never divorced from our mission. Baptism is your identity. It's who you are. Notice it says, it doesn't say you're my beloved carpenter with whom I'm well pleased. That would be who, what Jesus does. That's his occupation. That's not his vocation. Jesus' vocation is he's called to be the savior of the world. Every man in here in some level is called to be a father. Every woman in here at some level is called to be a mother. We're all called to live out this vocation, but we need power from on high. Heaven opens to us when we pray. So baptism gives you and I the power to access the Father's throne. It would be like if you and I, let's say, we'll make Deacon Wayne the, we're making God the Father for a minute. He's a good God the Father, look at him here. So he's God the Father, and let's say all of us are outside in the parking lot, we're coming into the church. What God sees when I come in, if you're clothed in a baptismal garment, meaning if you've been baptized, when I come before God the Father, He recognizes my son sent you. Please, what do you want? Because we don't come before the throne of God the Father in the name of Michael or in the name of Wayne or in the name of Joe or in the name of Susan or Jennifer. We come to God the Father in the name of Jesus. We have access, you know, maybe some of you that, that are older, um, remember this but a lot of churches would have the communion row right the communion row the point of the communion row is to remind us that this sanctuary is symbolic of heaven and we're symbolic out there of earth the priest symbols symbolic of Christ the mass is the heavenly liturgy and you all have come to look into heaven at mass where the body of Christ is offered for you and I and we're all participating, those on earth, those in heaven. We come together at every mass. Mass is heaven and earth kissing. The bridegroom, Jesus, comes down to receive his bride, the church. And there's holy communion that happens. Heaven and earth kiss, holy communion. My brothers and sisters, your baptism is really a frightful and amazing thing. What I mean is awe and wonder that God has inhabited Michael's flesh. God has inhabited my flesh. When I suffer a neck or a back or a leg or an issue of body or soul or mind, whatever I suffer or whatever I'm enjoying, God enjoys it with me. God has entered into humanity and he's invited humanity to enter into heaven. If we understood our baptism, we would not have a cloudy day ever. I was looking at these beautiful stained glass windows. If you kind of look, think about a, a stained glass window without light. What is it? You come in here at dark, come in here sometime at, at night time. You can't see anything. But when the light shines through the window, it's beautiful. The same thing when you and I let the Holy Spirit living in us shine through us. Humanity glows. This is why people are attracted to people like Mother Teresa or the saints. They allow God to glow through their humanity. Glow through them. And so we're all called to maybe pause today and think a moment about the glory and beauty and majesty of our baptism. What does it mean to be baptized? It means you've been incorporated into the body of Christ. You carry the Holy Spirit around every day, every step, every breath. 
Your sin has been washed away. Not at what you've done, but what He's done. Christ has purchased for you and I eternal life. And as our second reading says, the grace of God has appeared, saving and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, meaning to govern our passions to the glory and majesty of God. And so God's inviting us all to step back, realize who we are, and then begin to live out our mission. What is our mission? As I said, it's associated often most predominantly with our vocation to be spiritual fathers or mothers, bottom line. Everyone's called to be a spiritual father or mother, to help father and mother souls into Christ, to bring them into Christ. That's what a disciple is. Jesus wants to make disciples. And he's calling you and I to go out and make disciples. At the end of Matthew's gospel, he says, go out, baptize everyone in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Go out. Go out. Bring people into the heavenly experience, the encounter. The desire in our heart is not for earth. It's for heaven. And we've come here to refocus our minds and hearts on the altar, the sacrifice, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so as we listen to the scriptures today, he will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. Fire. Now, if you think fire is a, is a very comforting thing today, you know, with all the cold weather, right? If you're really cold and you get around a fire, you, everyone starts, if, if, if we were outside right now and we lit a fire, I guarantee people wouldn't be standing 100 yards from it. Everyone would press in real close to the fire because you want to get warm. Guess where God lives? Inside us. The fire's in here. When you pray, this might be an image you can use in your prayer. When you pray, you go inside and you sit around the fire of the Holy Spirit just torching and burning inside of you. Try that sometime. Take some time this evening or sometime this afternoon when it's quiet. Just step away and just close your eyes and use an image of there's a fire. One day I was praying and I heard this cracking sound in my spirit. And I really was hearing like the Holy Spirit's, you know, when a fire starts cracking and there's that heat and it's cracking, the wood's cracking. Like I heard this cracking sound in my spirit like the Lord saying, I'm burning in you. I'm burning inside of you. I'm, I'm, I want to love through you. Our baptism is associated with our mission. The word baptism means to be immersed. Immersed. We walk out our baptism by husbands, immerse your lives into your wife's life, in your children's life. Wives, immerse your life into the life of your husband and your children. All of us in general, immerse our lives into other people, other human beings. God enters into humanity. He's closer than my own skin. See, we walk by faith, not by sight. But God is so close to you and I. We got to immerse ourselves into humanity. Become the greatness you are designed to be. Now, the challenge is this. It's all a beautiful thought and it's all true. But the challenge is this, the cross is present. If you respond to your baptism, you'll at times be crucified. This is why we kind of withdraw from humanity, even our own personal selves. We run from our own humanity because deep inside you and, you and I were created to say, this is my body given for you. This is my blood poured out for you. Give God more to your family. It's, I'm sure you've all had this experience, but you know, it's easy to give God to strangers. It's hard to give God to the closest members of your family because they're the ones that get on your nerves the most. They're the ones that drive you crazy. They're the ones you live with. It's easy to get along with strangers. Hey, I know, how are you doing? Like everyone's all excited about the stranger, but it's like, I get to know somebody. It's like, you don't say hey anymore. How's it going, right? You kind of wake up like, oh. And we need to rediscover 
the gift of Christ in us so that we can give him to the world. Now, that's going to mean there's going to be a cross. Don't be afraid of the cross. This is why we, this is why our life gets stuck. Because we run from the cross. We're afraid that if we give ourselves, we're not going to be received or we're going to be hurt. So we stop giving. We know intellectually we're created to give. And we know it's a good thing even politically to give. Give to the poor. Give to this. Give to that. It's all good. But am I giving from my heart? Am I giving me? It's easy to give money. Like when we pass the basket, it's great to give the money. But are you giving you? That money is symbolic, that treasure you give to God for this church to remain maintained and upkeep and going forward. We place it here because it's you giving yourself, your time, your talent, your treasure. So as we go through the week, don't be afraid. I'd like you to think about moments where you taste the cross. Where do you taste the cross? That's where you need God the most. That's where you encounter the greatest intimacy with God. That's where you experience the mass being lived through your body. This is my body given up for you. This is my blood poured out for you. So as we go through the rest of this week, kind of think about that. Go inside, hear the fire cracking. Every morning, get ready to give yourself. And when you feel yourself crucified by your husband, wife, kids, family, friends, coworkers, etc., don't run. Don't come off the cross. Keep giving. And what you'll find is that's where the fire gets hotter. And you find that you start experiencing Jesus in your body as he loves those who even crucify him. This is the mystery of faith. This is how we save souls. This is how, this is what the devil does not want you to get. If you get this, you're going to exercise. Talk about exorcism. This is the ultimate exorcism of Satan from the world. When you and I let Christ continue to love in the midst of the crucifixions we endure. Whether it be a sickness, an illness, a family member, a friend, etc. So let's ask God to grant us these graces this week.